Ubuntu and all of its official flavors recently released version 2404. This is an LTS release of Ubuntu. And today I wanted to take a look at one of the official flavors of Ubuntu. I wanted to take a look at Ubuntu Cinnamon 2404. I'm going to run through a quick installation of Ubuntu Cinnamon 2404 in a virtual machine. The first thing you notice when you uh, boot the ISO is in the live environment, of course the installer, is the new Flutter based installer which is the same that the flagship Ubuntu edition is using. So very quickly I'm going to run through the installation. So English is my language so let's click next and then accessibility in Ubuntu Cinnamon it talks about some of the accessibility options. I don't need uh, any accessibility so I'm just going to skip that. Select your keyboard layout, English US is my layout, so I'll just click next on that. Connect to the internet, I use a wired connection, which has already selected that, so I'm just going to click next. So really nothing to do here, right? Just click next, 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 next. Interactive installation, which is it's the normal installation, or do you want to do an automated installation where you feed the installer a YAML file, which is essentially a script to tell it what to do, how to do the installation. For me, obviously I don't have this YAML file, so I'll just do the interactive installation which again is the standard installation now do we want to do the ubuntu cinnamon desktop minimize so that's the minimal edition or do we want to do a full cinnamon desktop environment i'll do the full desktop that's the one that's ticked on by default so let me click next on that do we want to install third-party software for our graphics and wi-fi yes you definitely want to tick that on to get all your drivers do we want to download all the additional media formats so that's all your multimedia codecs yes you need to tick that on as well so let's go ahead and click next on that. And then finally, erase disk and install Ubuntu Cinnamon. So this is the automatic partitioning. We're just going to give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine over to Ubuntu Cinnamon. Or I could choose manual installation and manually partition the drive myself. But I'll go ahead and just choose the automatic option. There is the advanced features here where you have options for LVM and also uh, using ZFS as your file system as well. But I'm going to go with the defaults here. Now I'm going to click next. Let's create my username, DT, and let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and confirm the strong and complicated password and then require my password to log in. Yes. Do I want to use Active Directory? No. Let me click next on that. Time zone looks good. I'll click next on that. And here is our summary. Everything looks good. I'm going to click the install button and away we go. This portion of the installation typically takes about 5 to 10 minutes on my machine, so I'm going to step away, grab a cup of coffee, and I'll be right back. And the installation completed. That took just about five minutes or so. And now to finish the installation, of course, we need to reboot the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and click restart now. And we come to the login manager, which of course is LightDM. If I click on the little cinnamon logo there is now a cinnamon on wayland an experimental cinnamon on wayland i'm sure it's going to be very buggy it's very early days for wayland on cinnamon but that is nice that they are at least you know thinking forward as far as supporting wayland in the future for right now i'm going to stick with the tried and true cinnamon on xorg though so let me go ahead and log in so upon login, we get the familiar Cinnamon desktop environment. Cinnamon always kind of looks like Cinnamon. <laughs> Whether they see new releases or not, you know, Cinnamon really doesn't change. It's a very old school, traditional, almost like a Windows 7 kind of desktop paradigm where you've got the bottom panel and you got your start menu, if you will, you know, and the, even the menu system. It's very Windows like it's a traditional kind of menu system. You've got some quick launchers down here. You have the ability to put desktop icons on as well so most windows users of course are used to throwing things on the desktop so cinnamon is one of those desktop environments that if you're coming from windows you'll probably feel right at home with some first impressions are it looks gorgeous i love the wallpaper the noble numbat wallpaper of course it's colored orange for the cinnamon variant of ubuntu i love you know the theming so the gtk theme the icon theme which is a ubuntu Jaro uh, icon set although it's colored a little differently again more orangish brown for the cinnamon edition but yeah everything just looks beautiful by the way this file manager if i go to about you can see they're on nemo 6.0.2 for a file manager nemo is a fantastic file manager if you hit Control h on your keyboard you will get the hidden files and directories shown because by default the file manager does not show the hidden directories and hidden files nemo is quite a good file manager one of the better file managers available on linux now let's go through the menu system and see what is installed out of the box 
box. So I'm just going to break it down by category. If I go into accessories, we have backups, which I believe is that the uh, Deja Dupe tool. Let's see, no, it's uh, just backups. I'm assuming it's a GNOME tool here. <laughs> Let's see, Deja Dupe backups. So it is Deja Dupe. I hate that they rename everything because it's confusing. Is, is it Deja Dupe? Is it not? Um, then just name it the right name anyway this is deja dupe 45.2 so this is for backing up your system deja dupe has been a part of ubuntu for a long time as far as they always uh, put uh, deja dupe on the uh, flagship edition of ubuntu also under accessories we have our calculator which will be the gnome calculator if i open it up let's just verify that that is the case yeah that's gnome's calculator if i go to about calculator this is calculator 46.0 so uh, we're going to be using a lot of GNOME applications. We're going to be using a lot of just GTK applications, Cinnamon being a GTK desktop. And Cinnamon defaults to a lot of GNOME applications because Cinnamon in some ways is kind of a fork of GNOME. When GNOME moved from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3, you know, like, 12 years ago or so that was kind of how cinnamon came to be it's because a lot of people resisted the change from gnome 2 to gnome 3 and then we had a lot of new desktop environments spring up including cinnamon we have a few other gnome applications such as characters gnome disk file roller which is gnome's archive tool so that would be for zip unzip things like that viewing archives files which again is the nemo file manager gnome fonts gedit for a plain text editor which i really like gedit for a plain text editor it's not bad. This is gedit 46.2. I like how it's defaulting to a dark theme. That's very nice. Also under accessories, we have GNote for note taking applications, our screenshot tool, and we have a virtual keyboard if we need it. There is a games category and it does include a lot of GTK based games. So a lot of the All Riot games. So you've got things like Mahjong and Mines and Sudoku is here. We have a graphics category where we have our document scanner for those of you that still need a scanning utility. We have the document viewer, which I'm assuming is GNOME's events, which is the uh, PDF viewer. I don't have any about information. Uh, it's not can't really get any information about this particular program. I don't have a PDF or anything to load in, in, in this fresh VM, but I'm assuming that's GNOME's PDF viewer events. Also under graphics, we have GIMP installed out of the box. That's very nice. GIMP is fantastic. One of my favorite pieces of free and open source software. I use GIMP all the time. GIMP is what I use to make all the artwork for my YouTube channels, uh, all the headers and all the thumbnails. I create everything using GIMP. And they are shipping, if I go to about, GIMP. 2.10.36. Also under graphics, we have GThumb. We have our image viewer, which I'm assuming is just going to be the standard image viewer that ships with GNOME. If I go to about image viewer, yeah, this is GNOME's image viewer. 45.3 is the version they're on. Under the internet category, we have Firefox for our web browser and Thunderbird for our email. Let's see what version of Firefox they're on. Let's see how long Firefox takes to load. I don't know if they're uh, are shipping the snap. I'm assuming they are. Let's go to help about Firefox. It didn't take too long to load though, but they are using the snap version of Firefox 125.0.2. And you can see this is the Mozilla Firefox snap for Ubuntu. Close that out. And I would assume they're probably shipping Thunderbird as a snap too, because uh, the flagship edition of Ubuntu has recently uh, defaulted to shipping Thunderbird as a snap as well. We also have Hex Chat for those of you that still need IRC chat. We have Pigeon for those of you that need a messaging client. Remina is a remote desktop client and Transmission is GNOME's BitTorrent client. If I open it, uh, I have to agree. But anyway, this is uh, Transmission. Transmission is probably the best BitTorrent client available on Linux, part of the GNOME suite of software. We do have an Office category. We have the entire LibreOffice suite here as well. Under Sound and Video, we have Brazero, which is GNOME's disk burning utility. Cheese, which is a webcam application. Rhythmbox, which is a fantastic uh, audio player, which crashed the system. Well, now this is a VM, uh, but that's strange that Rhythmbox crashed, crashed the system. Now that is definitely a bug. That, that is very strange. I wonder if I try to launch Rhythmbox again, would it do that again? Yes, it will. Hmm. Well, I'm glad I got that on camera because I think the, uh, the Ubuntu Cinnamon devs need to know that that's a problem. Now, again, that couldn't, well, now it, it's not even letting me log in. I may have to actually reboot this virtual machine. Let me go to shut down. Let's force off. And let me go and reboot the machine and now let me try to get back in 
If the Cinnamon desktop loads, yeah, it loads just fine. Yeah, but we're not going to try to open Rhythmbox anymore. That's strange, uh, but you know what? Just uh, for those of you that are going to try out Ubuntu Cinnamon 2404, just know you may want to install a different audio player if you also uh, suffer from that same bug. We have Sound Juicer, which is an audio ripper, like a CD ripper, sound recorder, and of course the videos uh, is our video player, which the video player also crashes the system. Oh, that's interesting. Probably a dependency for both the rhythm box and, and videos. The dependency probably going to be something very common, like maybe MPV or maybe a FFmpeg. I don't know. I, I could investigate the situation, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, not on camera anyway. Now, under administration, of course, we have a lot of our system tools, including our terminal emulator. That's nice that they're defaulting to Alacrity. I love that. Alacrity is probably the best terminal emulator on Linux right now. And while we've got the terminal emulator open, let's do a uname-r to see what kernel we're on. We're on 6.8.0. Now let me do an apt list dash dash installed to get a list of all the packages installed on Ubuntu Cinnamon. And now that I've done that, uh, you can see it spits out everything that is installed line by line, each package on its own line. Because it's all on its own line, we can do wc-l for the word count program. So pipe that command into wc-l to get a line count. And you can see there are 2,035 packages installed with apt. Now, how many packages are installed as a snap? Well, we can do a snap list. And let's see what is installed as a snap. Really, uh, nothing. Uh, we have Firefox and Thunderbird, which we kind of already knew were there. And then just some core components uh, of snap. But really, it's just Firefox and Thunderbird shipping as a snap out of the box. Now, because I'm not that familiar with Ubuntu Cinnamon as a spin, do they have HTOP installed out of the box? They do not. This is one of the things I hate about the flagship edition of Ubuntu is they don't ship HTOP, which I think most Linux users in general want HTOP on the system. Do they have Vim on the system? They do not. Now, this is another problem with standard uh, Ubuntu. Vim and HTOP are such critical components to a Linux system. Just install them out of the box. Like I, Somebody should really file a bug with that, but I could do a sudo apt install. And I'll go ahead and install both Vim and HTOP. I may keep this VM uh, f around for the future, and if I do, I'll definitely need both those programs on it. And those programs install just fine. Let's go ahead and run HTOP. Let's check system resource usage. And we're using a little bit of CPU. That could be because some updates are being checked. Uh, this uh, ISO, by the way, was released just a few days ago. But there probably are some updates that I could take. Uh, memory, as far as the RAM usage, we're using right at 1 gig of RAM uh, of the 6 gigs of RAM I gave this VM, which is uh, pretty normal for the Cinnamon desktop. Some other things to check. Let's do a where is pipe wire. I'm pretty Pretty sure they're defaulting to Pipewire as the audio server. Now they are. Let me go ahead and exit out of the terminal. If I get back into the menu system under administration, some other stuff. They do have the Synaptic Package Manager, which is a really nice GUI uh, package manager. It's it's not like an app store where you get a lot of screenshots or anything like that. No, no, no. It's much more minimal, but it's a lot more effective right it lists everything that is in your repositories that you could install you know you could actually do a search if you know for example if i didn't already have htop i could search for htop and it's going to return htop right here you can see that the checkbox here is colored green that means it's already installed so i don't have to install it but if i didn't have it installed i could check it and then i could mark all upgrades and it would you know, install that program for me. Synaptic Package Manager probably is something you want installed on every Debian-based and Ubuntu-based Linux distribution. Also under administration, we have Terminal. So we had Alacrity, but we also have Gnome's Terminal, I'm assuming. Yeah, this looks like the Gnome Terminal. If I go to About, this is Gnome Terminal 3.52.0 for Gnome 46. So two different terminals. Honestly, they probably could get rid of uh, really, they could get rid of GNOME's terminal because it's not great. I mean, it's okay, It's but, you know, Alacrity is much faster. It's just a better terminal. If you're going to install it anyway, just remove GNOME's terminal. But it couldn't just be a dependency thing where, you know, uh, for whatever reason, the GNOME terminal was a dependency for something. That's why it's there. I don't know. We have our places, which are just file system bookmarks. So, you know, if I click on documents, it's just going to open the file manager at that bookmark, which is the folder for documents, which 
Of course, I have no documents in this fresh VM. Let's check some of the wallpapers that ship with Ubuntu Cinnamon. So if I right click and change desktop background, uh, we don't have anything. We have the default background, which that's interesting. It's the default background, but the default background was actually the Noble Numbat. So what is this default background? I guess we have these subfolders here. Let's see, add weight to. So this is a, a GNOME background is what I'm assuming. We have a category here called blobs. That's interesting. Drool. So everything. So each one of these wallpapers is is in its own separate category. Well, that's kind of confusing. Could I just look at them all instead of one at a time like this? I'm not crazy about how they have this separated like this. Let's just try something different. Morphogenesis. Yeah, that's not great. Is there any kind of like nature photography? Well, here's one that says moonlight. Let's see if it's a photo. Well, that's actually empty. How about this one here? Home world. Can I click on it? What is this? <laughs> that's a Debian, <laughs> which I do like this wallpaper. I've seen it before, but that's one of the standard Debian wallpapers. So really nothing interesting here. Oh, there is a wallpaper category down here if you click on it. And then you get past Ubuntu Cinnamon wallpapers. For example, this one here, which actually is pretty nice. It's a little too bright. Well, it's very saturated, right? It'll burn your retinas looking at that too long. Here's one more of like a peach colored with the Ubuntu Cinnamon logo, which I really like. It's a nice variant on the standard Ubuntu logo with like the little mountain range in it. And of course, here's why. Yeah, this is much better, you know, much more minimal black and white. Yeah, I'd probably go with that. Overall, I think Ubuntu Cinnamon is a nice addition to the Ubuntu family. It looks good. It's very clean, very polished. I'm not crazy about the bugs with the multimedia software. I don't know why Rhythmbox and the uh, video player, which is probably Totem. I don't know. I never got to see either one of them load, but I'm assuming it's Rhythmbox and Totem. Both of them crash the desktop environment trying to launch them in this VM. So that's unfortunate. But you know what? They'll probably get that bug worked out very quickly it may already be fixed i downloaded this iso i think uh, yesterday or the day before so i've had the iso for a day or two so it may already be patched and i think ubuntu cinnamon being part of the ubuntu family makes sense because so many people like the cinnamon desktop uh, you know so many people gravitate to using a distribution like linux mint because they prefer a more traditional desktop environment over gnome you know, like they don't want to use gnome 46 they'd rather use you know cinnamon so having that option in the ubuntu family makes sense uh, so uh, this is great and being an lts these a community lts is well, that's not a community. It is an official flavor of Ubuntu, but these have uh, three years of support for their LTS. And that's very different than the flagship edition of Ubuntu, which has five years of support with up to 10 years of support if, if you pay for extra support, where these official flavors, and they're LTSs, but they only get three years of official support. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor, Dragon, Commander, Angry, Doraloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Rila, Tease for Lust, Rip, Prophet, Roland, Soul, Ashry, Tianran, Tools, Devler, Works, Into, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Ubuntu Cinnamon 2404 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.